The Automotive Club Type Pen, Pen Case Breather, and the PCB. Uh, to, the PCB first was put on cars. All the gear heads, all the motor heads were horrified by this. Oh my god, this is the end of performance in motorcycles. It's over. We're not going to be able to do anything from now on. No, the, the government's taken in, cut stepped in, and has taken over a certain parameter of automobile manufacturing. It's all over, basically, take the bus. Because it's not going to be different. Now, that turned out not to be so true. Early 1960s was the dawn of the muscle car. And so, with this in place, soon after we had things like the Camaro, the Hemi Cuda, uh, the Pontiac GTO, I still want one of those, a Volkswagen GTO, uh, the uh, Shelby Mustang, all these things came Firebird. The uh, Stingray Corvette, all these things came out after this came into place. So, the fact that these function at mid range, not at wide open throttle and not at idle, really affect high performance at all. High performance is pretty much high throttle, wide open throttle positions. So, uh, it didn't affect them at all. It did, have, did cause one effect that nobody expected. Uh, up until to the 1950s, and up until that area in the early 60s, cars didn't last very long. If you had an engine with 100,000 miles on it, oh man, you must have been working on that every weekend, changing the oil all the time, checking every adjustment exactly right, driving like my grandmother. You know, but she didn't drive actually. Uh, she was driven. Uh, driving drive like, like an old lady, I should say. You must have babied that car to get 100,000 miles. Wow, that's incredible. And usually, an engine that had 100,000 miles on it had at least one valve job by then. And sometimes had other issues, you know, a, a rake job done by then. Now, 100,000 miles today is not that unusual. The reason was, this PCB did something kind of neat. Uh, when it vented those vapors up to the top, it also vented some oil vapor, which aided in lubrication of the valve stem. And suddenly, the top end of the engine started lasting longer. And quarter million mile engines became valve well, unusual. And you can point that straight to the PCB. And it not only did not affect the performance at idle or wide open throttle, just the mid range where nobody notices a performance issue at mid range. Uh, it also made the engine last twice as long as it used to. Hard to argue with this one. By the way, a, a PCB to test this, you have the spring loader plunger in there. If you suspect you have a problem with the PCB, most people change the valve as part of a tune up. A PCB valve costs about 10 bucks. That's not much. And so they just swap those out during the tune up. You can check, check here if you're having a problem with your idle, the idle's unsteady. Nowadays, the first thing you look at is make sure you didn't accidentally unplug a vacuum line. But other than that, if you think it might be your PCB, take it off, and usually just, just unplug some line. And hold it by your ear and shake it. If you hear any gasoline rattling around or any oil rattling around, you, you put too much oil in there. Uh, you should hear the plunger click, 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 click back and forth as you shake it from one side to the other. You should sort of feel that little spring boing in, in, in your fingertips to get it open a little bit inside. If you hear it and feel it, your PCB is probably fine. If when you shake it back and forth, you hear a thud, a dull, muffled thud, or nothing's moving, it's plugged. And if you're a cheapskate like me, you'll probably clean up the carburetor too. Uh, if you're not, then just pony up five or ten bucks and buy a new one of Pet Boys and stick it in, and any problems are ever solved. I'm a serious cheapskate, I'll check things. It's weird, I'll, I'll save money on food, save money on auto parts. Then buy something top shelf for my stereo. Um, with controls. Now, another pollution control. This is what started happening in both cars and motorcycles. Not adjusting, you're ha having limiter caps. This is the idle mixture screw, not the speed screw, the mixture screw. This is the one that affects the air and the fuel ratio at idle. Uh, they used to be exposed, and the consumer would frequently go there with a screwdriver and just twiddle those things around until the engine didn't run or was running so rich it was polluted and went crazy. 
So to get around that, first the manufacturers put limiter caps. They don't have a good supply of those. They're pretty much universally hated. On top of the screw, which is still sat above the surface of the carburetor, up top there was a cap that was glued to the top. And the cap had a flag on it and two pins on the, on the body of the carburetor. So you could turn that mixture screw more than a quarter turn total trial, an eight eight turn in either direction. So once you had your auto mixture set, you put the, the cap on the flag in between the two posts, right in the mid-range, so the consumer can only move it when they turn it there. But move it they would. Or they try to pry the cap off, doing so they break off that, that, that screw. Now to take that cap off, as a mechanic, you may have to do that. You touch it, the cap with a soldering iron, hold it there until it gets good and hot, and that melts the glue. So you can lift off the cap. Most of us don't put it back. Uh, the uh, limiter clamp is a pollution control, but it's a pollution control from the 1970s. After that, they started recessing the input mixture screw and putting that, that slug over top of it. We already looked at this when we looked at a carburetor adjustment. I said you drill to the center and put a little cheap bone screw there, pop it out of there. And then you're supposed to put a new uh, limiter cap back in, or a new nut limiter cap, a new plug back in. Uh, so the consumer still can't get in there. Most mechanics nowadays don't do that. With the new smog regulations going in, they'll be required to uh, put the, the, the plug back in and keep the consumer, who really shouldn't be trusted with a screwdriver, uh, to keep his grip little fingers out of there. Now the adjustment of this was preset by the manufacturer in conjunction with the Environmental Protection Agency, the AQMD, and and the uh, These are the alphabet agencies that handle air pollution. The uh, Environmental Protection Agency, Air Quality Management District, and the uh, California SDR, South Coast Air Resource Board, SDRD. And so the mixtures were set intentionally lean. But, but this is what pollution control. The ignition timing was made non adjustable. First thing they did was they got rid of uh, a brake report ignition. Brake report ignition goes out of adjustment through normal use. As the parts wear, it's a mechanical switch that operates your sparks, your spark plugs. But that mechanical switch, as it's used, wears down. And as it wears down, it changes the ignition time. There's no way around that. The more it wears down, the more retarded your timing becomes. It doesn't mean it gets dumber, it means that the spark occurs later. And that means that the plane fronts chase the piston instead of creating pressure to push the piston. And so by going to electronic condition, it no longer drifts out of adjustment. And so rather than have a consumer or somebody else adjust it improperly to pass the spot regulations required to import the motorcycle into the US to begin with, or in the case of Harley Davidson, we allowed to manufacture in the US for, for uh, local consumption. They had to make the ignition timing non adjustable. So the, the ignition timing plate now bolts to the engine and you can't move it. it it's where it is. Uh, that's what the timing is. The old systems could be improperly set by the consumer. The old, old systems went out of adjustment. Usually, if you have an old breaker uh, point system, which, by the way, as far as the quality of your engine running goes, the breaker point system works just fine. It really does. But the problem is that every 5,000 miles or so, you're going to need a, 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 a tune-up. You're going to have to change the ignition time to compensate for the wear. And most consumers won't do that. The EPA requires that uh, a vehicle that's sold, first sold, that's loaded from the factory at the dealer, additional point of sale, that it goes to, it can go 25,000 miles with no adjustments and still pass all the, all the uh, specifications. There's no very point system in the world that so, we had to go to electronic condition. We'll be talking more on electronic condition a year from now, uh, when uh, we specialize in motorcycle uh, electrical systems. So they're set by the factory preset, not adjustable. The only thing we can do with the ignition timing is verify that it's working. We can't change the timing at all. Well, you can if you use a rat tail file, but you're not supposed to do that. The consumer's not supposed to. Now, the, the, the valve timing, the ignition timing, 
the valve actuation. Uh, the valve actuation is handled by the rocker arms, the valve train, if it has them, or by the camshafts themselves, or both, for opening and closing the valve. That's when the valve opens, when the valve closes, and how long, how far it opens. And so there may be different actuation systems for different parts of the world, depending on how long, what the duration of the valve is, and the lift, how, how far open is, is the lift. Uh, California, you had much stricter standards than the other 40 United States. And uh, two obvious examples of that. Uh, and these do affect performance. The California uh, Harley Davidson, uh, the uh, 1340 big twin. The California spent camshaft had so little lift and so little duration that the valves barely twisted open, which meant that the performance was just down in the gutter. Uh, to bring your Harley Davidson up to proper uh, performance as the manufacturer originally intended when they designed the thing, you would have had to take the California camshaft off and replace it with either a Screaming Eagle after, uh, uh, accessory camshaft or a 49 state cam to go to Nevada and get a 49 state camshaft and stick that in. And th then you have, then you just do the rest of it. Now, don't even bother with the exhaust until you did that. You legally can't do that. Harley Davidson in California got in a lot of trouble with the SCARB and the ATMMB for selling Scream, Scream Eagle accessories and installing them at the dealership. And then they paid a Mondo fine and were forced to stop selling Scream Eagle uh, accessories at their dealerships in California. With uh, uh, Honda, uh, I, I compared it side by side in this class uh, CBR 900 RR. And the California model versus the 49 state model. And you can look at the specification sheet right down the line and see the lift and duration of the camshafts, the camshaft timing. But the California model is radically different than this from the other 49 states. In addition, the rocker arm has a different fulcrum, changing the rocker ratio. My rocker arm. Here's my valve. There. If I'm opening this, say, this far, by rocking this forward, put an adjuster in here. Yeah, it's okay. If I move it that far by rocking this forward that far, I change it, I can change the ratio. I put the fulcrum over here. The same motion from the cam over here. Is now moving this a whole lot further, if it's being greater lift. But California, they was able the other way. This is exaggeration. So the same lift over here reduced this significantly. It's called rocket ratio. It's the ratio of this distance, this distance. And by changing that ratio, you can change how far open the valves are. The California model of Honda CBR had a different rocker ratio than the 49 state one. And uh, of course, the 49 state uh, CBR just walked away from the side by side drag run. The 49 state one just walked away from that one. So these are all factory adjustments that affect it. Uh, these things do affect your performance. But these are things that are not, most people are not messing with when they got rid of their pollution control stuff. Instead, they took off their, their, their breather, they took off uh, some of the other pollution controls and left the, the preset emission timing, left the sealed uh, carburetors, and leave the original camshafts in place. Very few people who aren't dedicated racers are gonna change out their camshaft. Most of them are 50 state. The, the, the ones that comply in California are being sold for the 49 states, which means that the whole country.